What's going on my friends? This is Dustin Stelzer with Electrician U. Today we're going to cut open some boots. So I have always wondered what the difference between like steel toe and carbon toe and composite toe and there's like nano toes now and there's some alloy, you know, like aluminum alloy toed boots. So let's get into it a little bit. First off, I want to cut some of these open so I can actually see what the inside of these boots are. Here's Johnny. <laughs> First one I'm going to start out with is the steel toe. Steel toe. Now what I'm using to cut with this is an amped carbide blade by Diablo. It's their thick metal uh, steel demon. It's nine inches, so it's really meant for thick metal. I think it's like three sixteenths to nine sixteenths, which is way thicker than is necessary. Um, I don't have a medium metal. Medium metal is probably the best thing to use for this. Um, thin metal is a little bit too light. It's anything that's eighth inch or less, which I guess this is really eighth inch. I, I could probably use thin metal on that. But I wanted to do the big one. So I'm using this uh, big old carbide sawzall. But, and just as I'm drilling through this, I'm not gonna show the whole entire thing, but it was really, really difficult to cut through even with this. Um, so this, this steel that they have, whatever this alloy is, is like really, really stout stuff. Steel toe boots are definitely among the heaviest of boots. Um, there's metal in the boot, and if boots weren't heavy enough as they were, uh, adding steel to them is going to only make them heavier. So if you've ever worn steel toe boots or any real work boots, you already know that there's there's weight to them already, but steel toe boots adds a whole other layer of, of uh, weight to them. So by the end of the day, you feel more tired, your feet start to ache, um, and you're just like lugging around, swinging your legs around, lugging around, swinging your legs around, lugging around, swinging your legs around. These damn heavy boots on them all day long. Now with steel, obviously steel toe boots are the heaviest of the boots. Um, they're really durable, they've been around for a long time, they're gonna have the cheapest price tag. That's not always necessarily true, a lot of the brands kind of dictate what the pricing is and a lot of the other features like if it's you know static dissipative uh, if it's electrical hazard rated if it's like slip resistant puncture resistant there's a lot of other reasons why price kind of drives uh, a little bit differently for one brand over another brand but by and large you know for the most part steel is going to be the cheapest of the options now one bad thing about steel is that it is thermally conductive like a mf so if you're in a cold environment, that is going to conduct through your boots and your feet are going to be cold because the metal conducts cold really well. Same thing with heat. If you're in a really hot environment, that heat will transfer into your foot through the metal. So thermal conductivity is something that kind of sucks for steel toe boots. One benefit of steel is that steel doesn't crack. You know, so like if something were to drop on them or roll over them or something like that, um, it, the, the material itself is not going to crack. It's going to fold and bend, but um, it's, it's not going to crack and shatter into smaller pieces. All right, our next victim is going to be the composite toe boot. Composite toe. Composite toe. The big answer to the weight issue that steel has is a composite toe. So composite just means that they've taken a whole bunch of different materials, they've put them together kind of into like this hard plastic really, um, but it's a lot lighter weight than steel. The other added benefit to this is the thermal resistivity. So it's not as thermally conductive, but if you have like cold temperature outside trying to get into your feet, it's not gonna conduct as well. And that's a really good thing considering most of us are wearing these boots all day, every single day, regardless of the weather or the conditions. Now I was a little bit surprised to see when I cut this open that this, to me, it looks just like fiberglass. I don't know if you can see like really up close, but it looks like there is a, 
uh, a matting on the inside of it. it kind of like a checkerboard pattern, like it's weaved fabric. To me, that looks like fiberglass. Um, still impressive, like it feels like ceramic almost. It's, it's got like this uh, um, kind of ceramic feeling. Like I feel like if I threw this on the ground, I would shatter it. Now these are generally a little bit more expensive than steel toe. Again, the brand is gonna dictate that as well as the type of boots, the environment that they're built for, if they're slip resistant, puncture resistant, electrically rated, any of that stuff. Um, but generally they're a little bit more expensive, still kind of a middle of the road price for a boot. The great thing is that they're lightweight. The downside is that they can crack, they can actually develop cracks, so it's I like to think of it like, you know, fiberglass resin. You've got a vehicle that has fiberglass wrapped all around it um, and you hit a curb. That fiberglass is a composite very similar to the uh, composites that are put into these boots. Um, not saying that these boots are fiberglass boots, they're not. Fiber, 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 fiberglass boots, they're not. But I'm just saying like a composite would crack if it's impacted, these could uh, crack as well. They could form little hairline cracks or actually just crack from impact if the impact is over a certain threshold. One really good thing though about the composite boots is that they are not as thermally conductive. So you're not gonna get that transfer of cold or heat outside of the boot to the inside for your toesies. For your toes. Last but not least, we have the Carbon Toe Boot. Carbon Toe. Carbon Toe. Carbon Toe. Carbon Toe Boots are really just another kind of composite material. Um, it's just a little bit different kind of composite. So they actually use carbon fiber. Um, when you look at the material, it actually looks like a carbon fiber hood would look like on a vehicle. Um, or any of you that are into racing, you know what carbon fiber is. <laughs> but, but it has the same properties as just regular fiberglass. You know, it's some kind of fiber matting um, and then layers of different, you know, glues and other materials that they put together this hard composite. This was really cool to open up and see. Like, I don't know if you can see the fiber matting on that as well. Um, that's what a carbon fiber hood on a car essentially is going to look like. But it's real thick too. So to get the same rating as this, this thin metal, they have to make both of these much thicker. So generally composite and uh, carbon fiber are a little bit thicker material to achieve the same rating that a steel toe boot would have. They have to have a little bit more material, um, but both of them are generally the same. Carbon fiber is uh, a little bit less thermally conductive than even the composites are. So the benefit of getting the carbon toe over the composite is carbon fiber is even more lightweight as a material, as a composite material. So you have more lightweight, you know, like easier to wear around every day pretty much. Um, and then you have thermal conductivity that's even greater. So you're, you know, you could wear like normal boots out in the winter and not have to worry like a steel toe boot would let that snow and that really cold uh, weather, that water, all of that temperature come through the boot. Whereas a carbon fiber is going to do the best job of not allowing that to happen. Now the downside with carbon fiber is just like fiberglass or most composite materials, there is the possibility of ripping um, or you know tearing that fabric, cracking the fabric, or developing some kind of hairline crack that can split a little bit. Um, so that is a possibility, whereas the steel is not gonna do that. And for a price tag, carbon toed boots are gonna be your more expensive. Um, probably not quite as expensive as the carbon nanotube boots, the nano boots that are, that are coming out these days. Um, but they're out of the three, out of the steel, the composite, and the carbon, they're gonna be the more expensive. Again, brands dictate. There's a lot of other ratings and things that happen with boots that could change that, whether you have like metatarsal protection or any of that jazz. So it, really when you go to look for boots and you're looking at carbon toe and steel toe and composite toe, you need to know that whatever you pay, you're gonna get what you pay for. So if you're gonna try to get like a pair of $60 boots, you're gonna get $60 boots. And you may hear me say that and be like, $60 is a lot of money for a damn boot. $60 is a lot of money for a damn boot. No, no it's, it's not. not. 
generally when I buy boots, like I have these Ariats. I, I'm pretty, I don't know, lately I've been wearing pretty exclusively Ariat. I just really like the styles that they have. Um, but I will, I feel comfortable walking into a store and paying 250 to $300 for a set of boots. These boots are going to last you, you know, two to three years of working every single day, sweating in them, like dragging them through dirt, scuffing them up, like, you know, resting sharp, hard materials on them and getting kicked around and beat the hell up. So for me, it, I can justify spending two to $300. It's the same thing. If I'm going to buy a drill, I'm not going to go buy some like crappy, you know, craftsman drill for $40 from Home Depot, I'm going to go spend $200 and get like a Milwaukee Fuel or like a DeWalt uh, XR. I'm going to get a pro grade version of a tool. I'm going to spend more money and make sure that I get the good stuff. So with boots, I recommend doing that too. Like don't skimp on them. Um, I would look for ratings. I'm not going to get into all the different ratings in this video, but just know there's a whole bunch of reasons as to why, um, a boot may cost a certain thing. So get into a little bit what you're getting, why you're buying what, what ratings you want, what you need before you go buy some boots. Don't just go to the store and pick some $40 boots off the shelf because they say the word steel on them and then think that you're going to be okay. You're probably going to suffer. Your feet are going to hurt. <laughs> you're going to be tired all the damn time. You may still get electrocuted. Um, there's a whole bunch of things that go into why boots are the cost that they are and why they're designed the way that they are. And as an electrician, every day, all day long, we wear boots. We work in environments where we need to be wearing boots. So just don't skimp on it. It's one of the most important tools that you could think about to spend money on and make sure you get it right. So I will have a video coming up where I will go through picking out a pair of boots and what you want to consider uh, being an electrician, what all the different ratings mean and everything. So love you crazy people. Enough of my rant. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much, Ariat, for sending me some boots to chop in half. Really appreciate you and I uh, love you guys. See you soon. Whatever this alloy is, is like really, really stout stuff. Stout stuff. Sout? Sout stuff? Stout stuff. Stout stuffs. Best can't use it and video.